<clears throat> those who trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion. It is established and is not moved. As the Lord, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds His people, and He is theirs now and forever. Mountain is a powerful image. And we think about a powerful image I want us to use that idea this year as we encourage ourselves to climb the mountain. That is to reach to the highest that we can reach, to be the best that we can be, to shoot for being the people that God wants us to be, to the very best that we have the ability to do it, encouraging and strengthening each other to grow and to do better. And also to think about how that God is a mountain for us. He is a strong and a mighty force. And we can stand with Him with anything because of that image of a great mountain. There are many concepts I'm sure that we will deal with this year as we think about the mountain. But for today, let us begin, if you will, at the bottom of that mountain and think about the foundation. And the admonition for us today is climb the mountain, but stay grounded. The picture you see is what happened in August of 2005. As we thought about, as I thought about the year and the theme, and thinking about a mountain, I went back into some bulletin articles to notice that in August, as we began to build, happened earlier in April, in fact, started breaking ground, but as we were getting ready for this place, we, uh, I had an article about the mountain that we are climbing together as the people of God, to build this place and to climb the mountain of success before God. And here is that foundation that was set all those years ago. It is the foundation that began. Once the, the ground was all done, it was the foundation that began the process. Makes sense. Because without a good foundation, then... Whatever you build on it is not going to last. It can be the greatest, strongest, sturdiest structure that's ever been built. And if you put it on a weak foundation, it will fall down. So we begin thinking today about the concept of climbing the mountain but as we do to stay grounded, to have a good foundation as we climb or as we make that climb. If you will, if you will turn to the book of 1 Peter, and we will be there today thinking about this concept of the foundation. And I want you to notice, primarily we will be in chapter 5, but I want to begin by noticing this. Of course, you know that Peter's name is Simon Peter. So for point of reference, uh, to keep people actively engaged and maybe to remember, let us think how Simon says. Simon says, number one, build that foundation. And I need to know what that foundation is. 
as we think about climbing the mountain, as we think about all the possibilities that we might encounter this year, here is the foundation that makes sense to me that every one of us should be thinking about. Every one of us should desire to build, and certainly it is the foundation that God wants us to build. He said, build the foundation of submission. As we climb the mountain this year, it is important that we begin with the acknowledgement that we all must be submissive to the concept of climbing the mountain. Uh, we must be people who are willing to submit to whatever is necessary in order to climb the mountain. Those who are rock climbers, those who are mountain climbers, those who have experience, who are experts, if you will, they are the ones that if I were going to do it, I would talk to them and say, now, what do I need to do? What do I need to have? Where do I need to begin? And if I were to say, you know what? I don't like your idea. I think I'm going to do it my way. Well, I've never climbed a mountain. I've never rock climbed. How much sense would it make? None. It is important that we be submissive. And so in the book of 1 Peter, over and over again, Simon addresses the concept of submission. For instance, in chapter 1 in verse 10, Simon writes, Peter writes to his readers saying and calling them to be obedient children. Everything that he is going to write in this letter, he addresses to them and he says, you need to be and you are obedient children. We, ask to be, we must be submissive in the same way that God expects children to be obedient to their parents. God wants us to be obedient to him. In chapter 2, starting at verse 13, he talks about the necessity of being submissive to all of the ordinances and laws of man. Well, he certainly does not mean that I am to set aside my morality or set aside my Christianity in order to, com uh, to comply with the ordinances and laws of God. Certainly not but in the ways in which they do not conflict with God, then I am submissive to them. I am under them. I am looked upon from God as to whether I am a faithful citizen by being submissive to those laws. In chapter 3, starting about verse 18 or so, we find where he is actually addressing Christian brethren who have become servants to masters. There were Christian people who were working in servitude to masters who were over them. And he says to them, I want you to be faithful and I want you to be submissive to them. It is likely, it seems to me, that some of those Christian servants might have had the attitude that says, well, now, wait a minute. If, if I'm a servant of God, then I don't ever again have to be a servant of man. That's not true. And so he says basically to those Christians who are in servitude, you serve your masters. You be submissive to them because that is your calling. In chapter 3, he addresses wives and husbands on the subject of submissiveness. Wives, he says, you be submissive. There were women who were Christians whose husbands were not. And they probably had the same mentality. Oh, I don't have to listen to him. 
He's not a Christian, but I am. And Peter says, wait a minute, you are a wife and you are to be submissive. In fact, the reason you are to be submissive is an evangelistic reason. You might win them if you are submissive. And then he turns right around in verse 7 and he speaks to the husbands. And he tells them to dwell with their wives according to understanding. And in that way, a husband is submissive to a wife. Because if a husband understands his wife in whatever way he does, he is submissive to that understanding that he has of her. He doesn't roughshod run over her. He is submissive in that way. In chapter 5 and in verse 5, Peter is writing to everybody. He first of all says, you younger submit to the older. But then he says, everybody submit to each other. As we climb the mountain this year, we need to notice that every one of us must be in submission to every one of us. In so doing, we are able to have a community. We're able to have a family relationship. We need to be submissive to each other. And that's what Peter says. But continuing and closing this general thought, he says in verse 6, Every one of us, six and seven, we have to be humble before God. We must submit ourselves to God. I need to be submissive to Him. And if I am submissive to Him first, then all of these other things will not be as difficult and they will have an explanation because God sets the terms and I simply obey as an obedient child. Simon says, build the foundation. Let us as a people, let us as individuals decide that we are going to practice and incorporate and be the submissive people God wants us to be because that is the foundation that will help us to climb the mountain properly. Number two, now we get more specific. In chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, Simon says, be grounded. When you have established a foundation, now you be grounded in that foundation. Notice what he says in verse 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Be grounded. To be grounded has the idea of being attached, to have footing, to hold your feet steady when pressure is applied. Peter says to his brethren, readers, you be grounded. Notice the three parts. Number one, be sober. To be sober. It means to keep your wits about you, to know that you're thinking properly, to, to think clearly and right. Be sober. Number two, be vigilant. In your grounding and on your foundation, be awake. No time for sleeping in the Christian life. No time for sitting back and doing nothing. He says, you stay awake. And then he says in verse 9, be steadfast. 
That is, be firm, be solid, be stable. As we climb the mountain this year, I hope that we can see us as a church becoming more stable, more solid. And every one of us will find a stability in Christ that's deeper and greater and better than we've ever had before. Because in so doing, we will be able to climb that mountain well. But then third, Simon says in verse 10, notice his thoughts. He gives us three or four ideas that we are supposed to hold on to. Because Simon says, here is what the foundation looks like. You want to know what a foundation for a Christian is? What is it we're working on? <clears throat> what is it we're striving for? What is it that we're building? What does it look like? Well, it looks like this in verse 10. Number one, he says, after you have suffered a while, pause for a moment to notice. Peter is writing to people who are undergoing great persecution. He's writing to people who are struggling, <clears throat> who are having a difficult time. Tonight, we're going to ask the question, what do you do when the foundation shakes? What do you do when things aren't quite as steady as they've always been? Well, these people are right in the midst of that. These people are in the midst of great persecution and difficulty. And what does he say? God, through this, is going to make you better. What's he going to do? He's going to build you a foundation that looks like this. This is the foundation we need to build. Number one, perfect. This is not the word you might be thinking. This is a different word. This word is a word that means connected together in just the right way to accomplish what needs to be done. In fact, it's more equated to adjustable. This word perfect is used in Matthew 4 and verse 21 when Jesus was going to get his apostles, and he came to Peter, James, and John, and he found them mending their nets. They were perfecting their nets. They were creating something that would allow the net to work properly. Maybe the holes were too big and they had gotten bigger and so they had to make them smaller so the fish could not get away. But it has within it this concept of being arranged in a way that it will move as it is needed in the given situation. When you climb the mountain, not every step is going to be like the other one. There are going to be challenges. Sometimes it will be easy climb. Sometimes there might be a hole. Sometimes it's going to be rocky. Sometimes it will be slippery. And the perfect foundation is the one that can adjust to that situation this year. Can you adjust? Can you be adjustable? To meet the situation. Number two, establish. This idea means to be so firm that you can't move. The, the foundation of God must be able to move and adjust, but it's also immovable. This is the same word. When Jesus was talking about the rich man and Lazarus and the rich man wanted Lazarus to send somebody over 
to help him because he is needing water. And Abraham is quoted as saying, there's a great gulf fixed between us and you. Fixed. Established. It cannot move. It's the same thing said of Jesus in uh, Luke 16 when, when he decided, he said, okay, or Luke 9, he set his face steadfastly to go to Jerusalem. He knew he was going to be crucified, but he was not going to turn back. Resolute, solid, and set, I'm going to Jerusalem. This foundation is a strengthened foundation. It is a foundation that is able to accomplish a purpose. Whatever is needed to do it, that's what you do. This word strengthen means whatever you have to do to accomplish what you're trying to do, that's what you do. In our language, it might mean, okay, buck up, brother. Whatever's got to happen, that's what you got to do. Put your nose to the grindstone. That's what this word is. As we climb the mountain this year, are you able to be strong enough to do whatever has to be done to accomplish the purpose that God has for your life and that we have? as a church, and that God has for us? Because if we do that, it'll look like this. Settled. Settled. It's the same word used in Hebrews 1 verse 10 when the Hebrew writer says, In the beginning, Lord, you set the foundations of the earth. And it will not be altered until God does it this year. Can we be people who are adjustable to meet whatever situation arises? Can we be people who are able to accomplish and do whatever is necessary to accomplish what we're going to do. Can we be people who are stable more than we have ever been? And in so doing, will we be settled? The matter is settled. We are with God. Today, I know you are with God. I know every one of us in here wants to be with Him. We want to be settled. We want to be established in a way that we will not move. I don't know what it's going to take in your life. I know what it will take in mine. And I think we all can know what it's going to take as a congregation. But let us decide today. We're going to build this foundation and we're going to ground ourselves to it. And we're going to be adjustable when things come that we have to face that we can do it. And we're going to make sure that we have enough strength, whatever it takes, to get it done. And in so doing, we will be settled people. If you're not a child of God, you don't have a hope. You don't have an assurity. You don't have a foundation. Whatever it is you're building is not going to last if you're not a child of God. It'll fail. Can we help you today? Can we immerse you into Jesus Christ that your sins may be blotted out and that you would have the foundation that God wants you to have? Maybe you are struggling. Today, can we pray for you and help you decide to be and have the foundation God wants you to be. Will you climb the mountain with us and stay grounded before God as we stand and sing together?